Hey, what's up everybody? This is Cam Jennings coming at you on behalf of EpicConversions.com and today I want to talk to you about coming up with ideas. Um, you might think, ideas for what, Cam? Uh, <clears throat> well, I'll tell you. Before I do, just want to remind you to get over to EpicConversions.com Get signed up for my free newsletter. I like to think I put my best free content out by my email newsletter. And you can get on that at epicconversions.com if uh, any of the stuff I'm going to talk about today resonates with you. So, when I say come up with ideas, I mean ideas for content. Whether it's, you know, an advertisement, whether it's uh, an angle for a sales letter, whether it's, you know, an email that you want to write, whether it's, you know, paid content... Maybe a course you want to create or an ebook you want to create or a print book or a print newsletter or, you know, anything where you need to come up with a good idea, you know? You're just looking for that spark, that, that thing, you know? And I tell you what, the more that we get drowned in content in this day and age, it seems like the harder it is to find that spark, the more elusive it becomes. And I'll give you a, a few ways today to find it uh, that I use. Um, and I'll tell you some things to avoid too, if I, if I remember. Um, <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, in general, um, when you want to come up with good ideas, the best thing you can do is to get away from everything else that's happening in your market. Man, the best thing to do is to step outside the box. If you're reading a book that has to do with your market, man, instantly put a bookmark in that thing and go read something different. So, go read a National Enquirer, you know? Go read, go read something about somebody or something that has nothing whatsoever to do with your market. Step outside of it. <clears throat> That's the best way to start, you know, imagination flowing, creativity flowing. That's original, back into your mind. Um, you know, I, I do. I use television shows and movies to do this too. Um, if I'm trying to come up with a good idea, I'm actually trying to come up with a really good idea right now. You know, um, I'm uh, working on... Uh, a new newsletter. Um, this is PLR. I, one of the things I do is I sell PLR. I sell uh, newsletter packages to people. I got a newsletter club. If you want to check that out, just go to epicconversions.com, scroll down to PLR newsletter club, and you'll find it. Um, but I sell these newsletters, 7 to 14 email newsletters, and the internet marketing uh, niche. Every month I put one out. Um, it comes with PLR rights. You know, people can just plug it into their autoresponder and go. And they also gain the ability to sell it as an asset with personal use rights. Um, but those newsletters, the, the key about those newsletters that I publish is that they are original and unique unto me. Like, I don't use ChatGPT to write them. I don't, um, you know go read some marketing book and then just copy all those ideas in my new... I don't do that, you know? I try to come up with unique takes. And the way I look at it with my newsletters is I want to create PLR with an info product sensibility. And what that means to me is with a good info product, it doesn't just solve a problem. It also has a unique selling proposition. Like, it, it comes from a different angle. The good ones have a different angle. They have a unique take, right? I love info products, and the good ones have a unique take. So I, I like to approach my PLR with that same info product sensibility. Um, so that's the first thing I could tell you. If you want to have an original idea, you got to step outside of your market. Um, <clears throat> that's just kind of a general tip let me get specific now because i know a lot of people use ai a lot of people are interested in chat gpt a lot of people are interested in claude 
lot of people are interested in BARD um, and all this other stuff. Now listen, you, you might wonder, how do you know about all these, Cam? Well, I'll tell you how I know about it because in 2023, when ChatGPT, ChatGPT hit the scene in November 2022, <clears throat> but pretty much all of 2023, I was entrenched in trying to understand AI and its abilities. Um, and I wasn't really using it for myself, but I was using it um, to kind of understand my competition. Um, I even published a newsletter about it last year. It's called Don't Chat GPTs Me. <laughs> but uh, that whole newsletter is about how to use uh, Chat GPT to get like original stuff, not just because the thing about Chat GPT and a lot of these AIs is they produce pretty mediocre content and I tell you what the reason it's mediocre is because it has a vanilla effect um, and what I mean by that is it's very derivative most of the stuff that it produces you've heard before in some way shape or form you've heard it before it just sounds like something you heard before it's almost like it Frankenstein together like descriptions of books and you know, blog articles or something, you know, it, and the reason why is because, you know, these large language models, they're just predictability models, you know, they're just predicting what it should type, what it should uh, put to answer your question or whatever, and uh, it gets that information by scouring the internet, it learns from the internet, and then it just like tries to put something predictable as an answer, right? So the reason I bring all that up is because what I'm telling you is people say, well, I like, I like to use, people will give you this tip, use chat GPT to come up with ideas, right? Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't use chat GPT to come up with, up with ideas. In fact, the opposite, it's a tool, it's free, it's out there. Why not use it to come up with ideas? But what I'm telling you is chat GPT is going to give you horrible ideas. Now, a simple little trick that you can use to get better ideas from ChatGPT is to ask it to come up with some ideas for an article or a book or whatever about this subject. And then when it does, then you ask it a secondary question. And that secondary question is, okay, now I want you to give me the exact opposite uh, versions of these. I wanna hear what you think would not be helpful to people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> given the same subject matter, right? And I've gotten so many cool and interesting ideas from telling ChatGPT to give me what it thinks would not be helpful to people. <laughs> Usually it's like 100% more polarizing, 100% more interesting, 100% more contrarian. And then, you know, a lot of that stuff, it's not going to fit, right? It's just going to be like, okay, well, I don't have anything to say about this, so... Yes, that would be interesting, but I don't agree with it, so I can't use it. However, usually you'll get like two or three, maybe out of ten, um, that's like, wow, you know what? Actually, that's a pretty interesting angle. That will get people's attention. It's completely different than what they're used to hearing, um, and I actually have something to say about that, right? So that's a good use uh, for ChatGPT and large language models to actually come up with you know, decent ideas, um, for content. Uh, now don't, don't be an idiot, uh, and, and take what I'm telling you here and run over there and come up with a bunch of contrarian ideas and start trying to like shape some angle around something contrarian just to do it. Right. I mean, if you got a weak point, it's still a weak point. Okay. You know, a weak point is a weak point is a weak point. Don't try to dress a weak point up with a polarizing headline still going to be a weak point, all right? I mean, you still got to think about it. You still got to look for something that makes sense. Um, so that's another thing I'd say about it. Um, I think uh, another thing I'd tell you about coming up with good ideas is that um, <clears throat> I think there's a lost art to patience. And then I think there's a underappreciated aspect to the deadline, 
right? And what I mean by that is that number one, I think that people, um, they want things and they want it now, which is probably part of the reason the credit card industry got so popular and they just has been incredibly lucrative and made billions and billions of dollars. That's another podcast, but, uh, the point is, um, people want it. They want it now. They want instant gratification. Uh, and people like repel creativity for some reason. It's like they're adverse to creativity, but you know, creativity is a, uh, it's a discipline, right? It's something you have to practice at, it's something you have to work at. Um, and you know, it takes repetition, you know, it takes repetition. And <clears throat> in my opinion, it takes a little luck sometimes, especially to come up with a great idea. You know, you can come up with some good ideas. But to come up with a great idea, man, sometimes it takes a little luck. Sometimes it just takes, like, not settling for, like, a mediocre thing. And, and what that means is you got to be okay with being patient sometimes. you got to let things come to you. And that being said, there's also something to be said for a deadline. Putting deadlines on yourself. Don't just uh, be endlessly procrastinating waiting on some good idea to come for you. Sometimes, while you're waiting on that great idea, you can move forward with a decent idea. I bet you a lot more money has been made from just decent, mediocre ideas that have been pushed forward than great ideas that just, like, have never came to pass. Um, Because someone was just waiting, and they went broke waiting on a great idea, you know? Now, me personally... I've ran forward with many good ideas, but they weren't great. Then sometimes, every once in a while, I'll have just a great idea, you know? And uh, I think what I'm trying to say there is there's kind of a balance between trying to have some patience, but also operating under deadlines. Moving forward sometimes with a good idea, while on the back burner, you're still waiting on that amazing idea just because you move forward with a good idea or or, or something that doesn't mean that great idea is not not coming that doesn't mean it's not off the table it just means you don't got it right now you're waiting on it that's how i look at it um anyways look i got a lot to say about this you know i've been producing content on the internet for over a decade now um but i think this is enough right we're at 12 minutes plus here. It's enough for a walk in the morning. I hope I've given you something to think about here this morning anyway. Um, this is Cam. His thoughts on a walk. And uh, yeah, if any of this has resonated with you, be sure to check out my uh, free email newsletter. You can find that over at epicconversions.com. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace now.